up, guys? Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at Android 4.1, or Jelly Bean, on the Galaxy Nexus. Now, this is being pushed out to all HSPA Plus unlocked versions of the Galaxy Nexus right now, but will be coming to the carrier-specific versions as well. So right now, we're taking a look at the unlocked version. And 4.1 isn't a major release. It's pretty minor overall, but it has some important new features and under-the-hood improvements. So one of the changes here is the new boot sequence, which now features that Nexus X logo animation instead of that sort of kaleidoscope effect you used to get on Android 4.0. The lock screen has also been improved here, uh, so you can see we got a different animation here with the lock icon, but you can now swipe left or right uh, to launch the camera or unlock the phone, which is unchanged, but you now have Google Now up here. Google Now, now you get the idea, but Google Now is a new major feature for Jelly Bean, and this is uh, the most talked about feature, and it's sort of an aggregator of information. It automatically updates and provides information based on your location, your search history, your Google account information, and that sort of thing. And it evolves over time. And you can see it displays information in this sort of card viewer. And up top is our search bar along with the new enhanced voice search, which we'll demonstrate in just a minute. But up top is also some artwork, which is relevant based on your location and weather and that sort of thing. So right now, by default, it includes a weather widget. You can see in Rochester Hills, it's a steamy 92 degrees right now. You can also edit this information just by tapping the upper right corner, go to settings, and there you go. Now below this, you could have additional cards. So for example, if you arrive in an airport, it might show you your flight delays or flight schedule. If you arrive at a train station, it might show you the train schedule. If you arrive in a the movie theater, it might show you your movie listings based entirely on your geolocation and perhaps your search history. So for example, if you search for Prometheus, it might show you your Prometheus listings or show times for that time. Now this viewer is also combined with new search that includes a substantially enhanced voice search function. How old is Barack Obama? Barack Obama is 50 years old. So you can see we get this sort of card viewer with information, and below that we can find our Google search results. So you can swipe this out of the way to get right to them. Give me directions to the nearest Lincoln dealership. Getting directions. So you get some voice information there, and now it's giving me the opportunity to cancel this action, and it's going to give me some navigation information. How old is Patrick Stewart? Patrick Stewart is 71 years old. Who directed Alien? Alien was directed by Ridley Scott. When did Aliens come out? Aliens release date is July 18, 1986. So you can see it's very quick. Who is the Prime Minister of Canada? The Prime Minister of Canada is Stephen Harper. When is the next presidential election? The presidential election is on Tuesday, November 6, 2012. Now you can also do simple math like, what is 85 plus 85? The answer is 170. So sometimes it can answer directly, but other times it does a Google search. What is 85 times 75? So in that case, I guess it can do plus, but it can't do times. So anyway, you get the idea there. It does have some problems. It doesn't work for all things equally. How many calories are in a bagel? So in that case, it just gives you search results, and you get no voice feedback. You also continue to have Google Voice actions, such as Play Artist, Coldplay. Playing Request. So it's going to give me some time to cancel that request, or I can hit play and let it jump right to it. Other voice actions include, set an alarm for five minutes from now. Setting alarm. And I'm going to cancel that for now. Email Michael, finish this video tonight. So as you can see, I have my contact information along with the body of my email, and I can go ahead and send it off. Now you can also get to Google now just by tapping and holding the home button and swiping up. And you can also tap the search box. And it does the same thing. Now one of the biggest enhancements with 4.1 is under the hood, and Android calls it Project Butter, which is basically designed to improve the smoothness of the user interface. So you get much higher frame rates, you get much more responsive touchscreen events. 
uh, and that sort of thing. So the operating system is much smoother, even though this, the Galaxy Nexus is pretty much old hardware. It's not powerful hardware, but it really keeps up and actually outperforms anything uh, operating uh, even Android 4.0 with higher specs like the Galaxy S3. So software alone can really speed up the performance of the OS and this is definitely one of Android 4.1's biggest contribution to the evolution of Android. Now Android 4.1 also makes some improvements to notifications. So for example when you bring down the notification tray you can see that the background fades. Notifications are also expandable now. So if you use two fingers to swipe down you can see I can actually see the photos I uploaded to Google Plus or I can hide them and if I look at my email notification here I can expand it to see more detail. You can also act on items. So for example, I have a little widget here for my music. So I can play it right now. I can even see album art. Or I can skip and that sort of thing. On the upper part of the notification tray, you can see we have a larger clock icon along with the date, as well as a new icon for clear all. Now we also have offline voice to text dictation here. So I'm going to compose an email message using the microphone with all my networks turned off. This is a text of voice dictation on Android without internet. So it works pretty good. Now the keyboard has also added predictive text. So for example, if I start typing, it was a dark and stormy night, it will start detecting what the next word might be. So let's go it. You can see what the next word is, a or is or in, and I don't want that. I'm going to say was, a. Next word, and. Night. So you can see it's actually quite smart. Now Android 4.1 also makes it a lot easier to manage the, and organize your apps and widgets on your home screen. So you can see here that if you move the widget around here, uh, you can see that the apps get out of the way. Now the camera app has also been enhanced. So when you take a photo, you can see it sort of jumps to the right, letting us know that all of those images are to the right. And if you want to get back to the camera, all you have to do is swipe to the left. Now another minor details here, you can see when you tap any of these icons in the lower tray, you can see that the animation actually seems to bloom from the location of those icons. It's pretty subtle. Now Android 4.1 also ships with a new widget designed to work with the Play Store, which can identify music. So this is a lot like the Shazam app. So all I have to do is tap that and it will listen to the music to identify it. So you can go ahead and buy that in the App Store or you can refresh it to listen again. Now Android 4.1 also adds liveness checks. So when you use the face unlock feature, you have to blink or perform an action in order for it to unlock. So this prevents people from using a photograph to unlock your phone. So that's kind of a neat idea and it seems to work pretty well. Also standard with Android 4.1 is Google Play Magazines, which is basically their marketplace for magazine subscriptions. You can also see there's that nice new animation that appears across the board. So here you can purchase magazines. For example, if you go to Newsweek, you can subscribe, jump to that, you can subscribe annually to, uh, for $29.99 or you can purchase a month-to-month -month trial for $2.99. Now Google Currents is also updated with Android 4.1 and Google Currents is essentially a news aggregator. It's designed to optimize websites for viewing on small portable devices. So for example, if you jump to The Verge, instead of getting all the graphics and images you don't want to read, uh, this optimizes just for text so it fills the screen with text, you don't have to pinch to zoom and that sort of thing. So it works pretty good. I actually really like that feature. Now other enhancements include Android Beam, which now supports Bluetooth data transfers. You also have larger contact art, so you can upload images up to 720 by 720, so the thumbnails will be sharper and higher resolution. Android 4.1 also adds multi-channel audio and USB audio for digital audio converters, and you have audio chaining, or otherwise known as gapless playback for your music. Also new with Android 4.1 are Delta updates for apps. So instead of downloading the entire app all over again, it just downloads the updated components. Now the Android browser is still standard on the Galaxy Nexus, but on the Galaxy or the Nexus 7 from Asus, Chrome is now standard, but that doesn't mean Android has been abandoned. Instead, they've updated it. So you have better HTML5 video user experience and includes touch to play, pause, and smooth transitions for inline to full screen mode. You have improved rendering speed and reduced memory usage for better scrolling and zooming performance. Improved HTML5 CSS3 canvas animation performance, improved text input, and updated JavaScript engine for better JavaScript performance. So you get a much faster Android browser. So if you still want to use the Android browser, instead of Chrome, it has been updated to perform much better. Now before I go, I just want to show you the Easter egg for Android 4.1. So if you tap 
the Android version a few times and then tap and hold, uh, you get a little game here. So you can flick these beans around and have some fun there. So there you go, guys. That's Android 4.1 or Jelly Bean for the Galaxy Nexus. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again in the next one.